încredere. Aceasta este baza relațiilor pe care finlandezii le au cu politicienii lor. Succesul Finlandei se datorează în mare parte colaborării dintre autorități și societate. Pentru mulți, pare ireală alăturarea cuvintelor încredere și politician, dar se poate. Sunt și oameni politici care înțeleg că ei lucrează pentru comunitate și nu invers. Ambasadorul Finlandei la București, doamna Mariut Acola, ne dezvăluie o parte dintre secretele acestui mod de lucru. Sunt Cristina Cilacu. Începe pașaport diplomatic. Mariut Akola, ambassador of Finland, welcome to Diplomatic Passport. Thank you very much. Mulțumesc. Uh, we are filming outside in almost Nordic uh, conditions, <laughs> uh, but at least we get to see each other and we get to, to talk to each other in person. Uh, that won't be the case of the uh, people uh, that will attend your national day next Sunday. How is it like to be a diplomat in these pandemic times and to do everything uh, via internet? I must say that, uh, well, being an ambassador, of course, your work is um, a lot of meetings and meet, meeting people and attending, uh, attending seminars, conferences. So to be present is the very essence of, your, of our work. So these are very exceptional uh, time for ambassadors. But we have, uh, we have uh, managed very well at the embassy, and, uh, but of course we hope that this will be over soon. Finlanda are cele mai mici rate de infectare COVID-19 din Europa și asta pentru că a reacționat în fața pandemiei după un plan foarte clar pe care l-a respectat toată lumea. În primăvară, guvernul a impus o carantină de două luni care a închis școlile, restaurantele și zborurile în și din țară. Folosirea unei aplicații care putea să îi depisteze pe cei infectați a ajutat la încetinirea răspândirii virusului. În plus, finlandezii sunt obișnuiți să păstreze distanțele fizice între ei în mod natural. COVID-19 uh, was a uh, difficult time for your country as well, but uh, then again your country was at some point at least among the very few states that managed to, to fight it well and to, to have good, uh, good reactions to it. How is it to, to make people work with authorities and to make them engage into those and to respect those, uh, those measures uh, taken? That's true. That and, and that's that's still true. That uh, Finland is one of the one of the one of those countries who has been managed to fight very managed to fight very well against the against the COVID. And uh, we have the hybrid strategy. We have been applying that strategy since the spring. And uh, and uh, we have been the aim of the strategy is has been curbing the curbing the epidemic and while at the same time minimizing the negative impact on the businesses and the people and society as well. So we have we have a good strategy in place and we have been managed to implement it in a very transparent and rational way and uh, the communication has been also a very important part of the part of the, our strategy but when it comes to the people of course there are cultural differences and uh, Finns i mean Finns they 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 hope they have this image of the social social distance different compared to other nations and uh, i would say also that Finns are quite rule abiding uh, finding nation and citizens And of course we have to, that's the fact that uh, the Finland, we have a small population with sparsely populated, so we are not so many. So, but I would say also that we have this COVID uh, contact, uh, contact application, contact tracing application. It has been very good asset in fighting against the virus. And that's the application at when when there is a person around you with COVID, a possible COVID, and then you are exposed, it gives you the signal. Mm -hmm. But it won't give you any data, private, uh, personal data or, or data on your location. But it has been a good asset in fighting against the, this uh, COVID. This is something that probably will have a problem uh, to be used here in Romania. And I have to ask you, don't you have this problem with the uh, conspiracy theories? Uh, people are not suffocating from the masks. I don't know. No. no, we don't have that. And I think I've been I've been reflecting on this a lot. And I think the main reason for this is that we are the society of trust. There is a, 
I mean, very high degree of the trust on authorities, on government, on different kind of authorities, and also the stakeholders, the, the medical stakeholders, etc. So the trust is, is the key issue. And, well, you can see it in practice because about half of our population has already downloaded the app, the application. So there is a trust. Este adevărat că populația finlandeză numără puțin peste 5 milioane jumătate de oameni, dar totuși este un număr mare dacă vorbim despre faptul că cei mai mulți au respectat deciziile guvernului. Un sondaj intern arată că 73% dintre finlandezi sunt de acord cu măsurile luate în pandemie. Cum reușește politicul de la Helsinki să convingă populația? But how do you gain this trust in authorities? Because you already are in Romania for quite a while and you know the degree of trust we have when it comes to our authorities. I think it comes on, I mean, on the basis of our I mean, tradition and the history. We, are, we have been prepared quite well because we have this knowledge and experience of uh, of uh, collective experience about, for example, this crisis in the 1940s when we had a war with the Soviet Union. So there have been very severe crises in our history. So we have, we, we have been prepared and we know, the Finns and citizens know that the authorities are prepared. And of course, uh, I must say that we have a very high level of the healthcare system and people trust on the healthcare system. So. It comes on the on the basis on the long longer longer experiences among the citizens. Economia finlandeză este suficient de solidă, dar chiar și așa, strategia de luptă împotriva COVID-19 a inclus și măsuri pentru protejarea economică. Rezultatele se văd acum, pentru că la nivelul UE, productivitatea economiei a scăzut cu o medie de 14%, în timp ce în Finlanda a scăzut doar cu 6%. You said that you had a strategy that worked uh, in the case of um, dealing with the pandemic, but uh, do you have also a strategy when it comes to uh, what is going to happen after the pandemic will be over? Of course, this is this is this is not only the only the healthcare crisis. This is uh, this is uh, really really the economic crisis, and it's gonna it's gonna take a long time to recover economically. And when, when we think about, for example, operators in the field of tourism and uh, travel, etc., and also the so-called Horeca mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and also the travel agencies, etc. So it will gonna take time and it needs, it needs a long-term strategy and uh, with the measures. And uh, we need to do also, we need to have also the strategy at the level of the EU to recover from, uh, from this crisis. And that's what had been advocated by our Prime Minister in recent days in, in Financial Times, for example, and also in Politico, mm -hmm. that we need a European level strategy to, to fight against this COVID and then to recover from this crisis. Finlanda are cel mai tânăr premier din lume, Sana Marin. La negocierile pentru banii europeni necesari pentru ieșirea UE din criza pandemiei, a poziționat Finlanda între așa numitele state austere și restul țărilor membre, care doreau o valoare mai mare a pachetului financiar. Acum, guvernul de la Helsinki susține distribuirea acestor bani în baza respectării valorilor europene. Speaking about European strategy, of course, we all remember the uh, negotiations during uh, last summer nights in Brussels among uh, our uh, European leaders for exactly this uh, help coming from EU. We're talking about the uh, recovery package and also the budget for the next seven years. But there is this new condition uh, referring to the uh, rule of law. The European states that want to have EU money must respect this uh, important uh, value we have. Uh, now the situation, as uh, you know, is blocked. Uh, Hungary and Poland are opposing this condition. What is the, the position of Finland? Because uh, it's, an, it's a new d a dilemma inside the European Union. Rule of law is one of the one of the top priorities for Finnish government and for Finland as a society and, and when it comes to the basic values like rule of law, equality, democracy and freedom and, and, and uh, etc. So it's, it's really uh, one of the most important uh, priorities and it was also the priority for our, during our pres EU presidency. And, uh, and uh, we believe that there should be a strong link between the use of the EU funds and the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And I would say that 
I mean the EU is the fundamental principles and values of the EU are these values. That's the EU is a, what the EU is about. So uh, we, of course, we 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 still think that there should be the strong linkage. And but of course, in the EU, there are also always compromises. And and the German presidency uh, managed to reach a good compromise. And now we just need the final decision because, as well, as I was referring, we are one of the most severe crises. Of, I mean, of course, we cannot compare this to the Second World War and First World War, but still very severe crisis. So, I mean, many European countries will need the money and funds from the Recovery and Resilience Fund, including Romania and many other countries. So, uh, we need the decision and we need it quickly. Reforma Uniunii Europene pe mai multe paliere. Asta cer cam toți liderii europeni. Situația provocată de pandemia de COVID-19 este considerată un moment foarte bun pentru schimbări în bine. This pandemic is also a sort of point of restart uh, inside European Union, not uh, just the entire world. And uh, if we are talking about restart, of course, we have these uh, discussions about green deal, green life, green way of life, and so on and so forth. But uh, in order to get there, you need a strategy. And the question is, what shall we change first? Because there are so many uh, levels in order to, to be changed that is quite It's difficult to choose this exact point or that exact point uh, to create the changes. Um, is the uh, circular economy a good point to start? Definitely. And well, we we had our first strategy with uh, with the roadmap already 2016. And at that time, this is again the question of that you decide that. We have a vision, mm -hmm. and then we are, then we built and repaired the strategy. So you need a vision, and our vision is that we cannot continue like this. We we cannot. Uh, we need to change our thinking when it comes to the production and consumption. We cannot continue consuming and producing the same way, and also continue the old to have the same kind of ownership. So we decided this, and this means, for example, that uh, we have the vision Finland to become a carbon neutral country um, uh, with the Nordic well-being by 2035. And it means that we are going to increase, uh, strongly increase the use of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also we we are um, we are trying we are promoting also the walking and cycling and the use of the e-cars and uh, also the use of the public transportation so to turn the traffic into the more the smart mobility and also the use more uh, smart uh, energy and we have ample opportunity for that with the use of digitalization and uh, and uh, different kind of a digital solutions and innovation so it's very important i mean this This, nation, this environment, this climate, and this biodiversity, we need to protect. There is nobody else to protect that except us. Give us some uh, examples in case of uh, Finland when it comes to uh, putting in practice the, uh, eco the circular economy. I already said that, um, that the more use of the renewable energy, and it means that uh, there, is, there is still um, There is still they use coal, for example, in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So get rid of the use of the coal as uh, in heating. And then, of course, I mean, Helsinki, Helsinki is building a lot of biking routes. So and encouraging people to, to biking. And they have managed to do it in uh, over the years. And then, of course, they, are, they have built also the new tram routes. So, so I mean, investing. Uh, resources in uh, in public transportation and uh, also there are there are also incentives for for buying the e-cars electric cars so there are many different kind of uh, ways to do it and uh, of course when we talk about circular economy there is also the question of recycling so we we tend to, to increase the the rates of the recycling rates for the municipality waste etc so circular economy is a very very wide concept and uh, it contains a lot of different kind of 
kind of uh, dimensions and from recycling, reusing and and uh, and sharing and etc. So it's a very it's it's also a very ambitious target and it takes it takes for years to change the the economic basis from linear economic basis to circular economy. Comisia Europeană a făcut publică în această săptămână o propunere concretă pentru viitoarea colaborare cu Statele Unite, tocmai pentru că parteneriatul transatlantic este esențial pentru schimbările de care este nevoie, iar pentru punerea în practică se dorește chiar și un summit comun USUA în prima jumătate a anului viitor. If we return to the relation uh, uh, of European Union as a whole with the United States, uh, we will be uh, dealing with a new president uh, starting uh, 20th of January next year. Uh, but the trust in this relation was uh, was a bit broken, or maybe more broken. Uh, what do you think? Um, the next relations with the um, Biden administration and the European Union will look like from point of view of the economy and also to foreign affairs. This transatlantic trans relations is the, the one of the most, if not the most important relations because we, the US and the EU economies, they cover about third of the world trade, mm -hmm. about half of the world GDP. So it's very important to take a good care of these relations. And uh, we believe that um, there will be more cooperation, more collaboration, more coordination. Whatever it is, the differences, issues, we, climate issues, uh, terrorism, international terrorism, and also the human rights. So um, uh, we, we, we need, we need more cooperation and more coordination in the multilateral forums and also bilaterally. So I believe that we will have a better times than the last last four years. And uh, these two economies, we need to, we need to, we are allies. So we need to discuss and tackle the global global challenges like climate change and not to talk about this pandemic. Rovaniem este oficial satul lui Moș Crăciun. Capitala Laponiei devine anual locul unde se adună cei care vor să simtă din plin spiritul celei mai iubite sărbători din lume. Chiar dacă virusul SARS-CoV-2 este un fel de grinci care vrea să fure Crăciunul din acest an, șansele de reușită sunt nule. This Sunday is going to be your national day, so uh, happy Finland's day. Um, I have to remind you that, and remind us all, of course, that Finland is also the uh, country of Christmas. You have, of course, the village of Santa Claus, close to the North Pole. How uh, will people get to travel this year um, in, uh, in Finland and in Rovaniemi? Yes, thank you very much. We, we have our... Um, it's I just w wanted to say that it, our national day is called Independence Day and there is a very specific uh, reference to that. We Happy Independence Day. Independence Day and it's a very serious celebration in Finland because we have, there is this reference to the, to the wartime in the 40s and it's associated very strongly with, uh, with, the, in, with the sense of the being independent. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Christmas. Yes, Christmas will come, whether there is a COVID or no. Uh, no, and and uh, and I'm sure the Santa Claus will also visit uh, visit homes and uh, and uh, is happy to see the children with the social distance and and the, and mask, the mask on. <laughs> mask on. So Christmas is is really the. Um, Uh, if not the most important celebration in Finland, of course there is uh, the midsummer, midsummer also competing. But um, it, it's time to, of course, with the social distance and maybe even in some cases mass, to get together. And uh, I mean, I think this COVID and and Christmas is also one of those issues that we are more united and we feel more united and we need to be together and. Uh, just to strengthen ourselves that uh, that we will survive and uh, we will overcome so but uh, you you were referring to the Finnish uh, Finnish Lapland of course the Lapland is is living for for tourism and and travel and uh, many travel agencies have cancelled cancelled the flight to Lapland but i hope that many Finns will travel to 
to, to Lapland and to have their break, uh, their Christmas break. People are getting fed with, uh, with COVID and they, they want to get normal, back to normal and just live a life. So um, it's, 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 it's hard to, even for Finns to have a social distance and not meeting your grandparents or your aunts and uncles and, and even with your friends. Because so one year, especially for young people, it's, um, it's really hard time. It has been hard time. So I hope that the vaccine and the vaccines, they will eventually come around the beginning of the next year and then we will at least get somehow back to normal or new normal. Some people are talking about, of course, the new normal. But Ambassador, thank you so much for this interview. Happy Independence Day and uh, Merry Christmas, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mucho más, Cristina. Atât pentru astăzi, dar rămânem în continuare online pe pagina de Facebook a emisiunii și pe contul nostru de Twitter. Revenim cu subiecte noi din lumea diplomației și a politicii externe vinerea viitoare de la 11.30 și în reluare sâmbăta de la 22.30. La revedere!